international success coach and noted author Constance Arnold delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices as well as with best-selling authors and experts she interviews. Think, Believe and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and your words to work for you and to bring about the life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And of course, I am Constance Arnold, your grateful host today of the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. And I am broadcasting live with just a little touch of Southern flavor from beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. So grateful that you've joined me from all over the world. And do I have a great show for you today. Well, I hope that you're having a great day. You know, that is a choice and that you have had a great week. I'm doing extremely well. Just very grateful for the opportunity to serve you and to speak to you today. So I just have a couple of things really quickly because we're going to be talking, interviewing a man, um, Harry Carpenter, who has taught and studied the law of attraction for 60 years. And I want to hear everything that he has to say. Well, uh, let's see. The first thing I just want to remind you is that next week I'm going to have Dr. Joe Vitale from The Secret on my show and then the next week Minister Jazz is going to be back with part two and then the next week I'm going to be teaching so I have some great shows in store for you in August I think the first weekend in August I'm still getting all the details together I'm going to have my breakthrough weekend here in Atlanta we'll tell you more about that later on Uh, but you need to make plans to be here I'm going to be working one-on-one with you it's going to be a small intimate group Uh, we're going to take your most dominant goal and actually write out a plan So you won't just hear information, you're going to actually write out the plan and the how-tos to move from where you are to where you desire to be. Isn't that exciting? And let's see, of course, you know you can visit my website at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. So many of you are coaching with me now, and I'm really excited and grateful for that. I always say that everyone who comes to me for coaching and we talk and I believe that it's a match that I believe that that person was sent to me by the spirit and because we have a partnership with the spirit right in the middle uh, of our coaching that that million dollar ideas and strategies will be downloaded so uh, I think that's all I'm going to say because I really want to hear what the Mr. Harry Carpenter has to say. So we're going to go to these quick commercial breaks. And then guess what? I'm going to be right back. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Heard by millions worldwide through 38 internet radio stations and in over 135 countries. Be sure to sign up for your monthly updates and get all the latest information on LOA radio events such as cruises, workshops, and seminars, as well as information on the latest shows, topics, and guests. Go to LOARadioNetwork.com and sign up today. Are you ready to create the life of your dreams? Imagine partnering with a coach that can help you manifest extraordinary success. Constance Arnold has been a licensed therapist and coach for over 25 years and has successfully worked with more than 10,000 clients. Constance will help you clarify your goals, eliminate self-defeating beliefs, and create strategic plans to manifest your dreams. Constance offers a variety of coaching packages, pay-as-you-go, half-yearly, and yearly coaching. 
Contact Constance today for guaranteed coaching that produces extraordinary and permanent results. For more information, go to fulfillingyourpurpose.com. It's here, it's hot, and it's a must read. It's the science behind The Law of Attraction magazine. Every issue brings you great articles and in-depth how-tos from all your favorite Law of Attraction experts, authors, scientists, and medical professionals. Go to lawofattractionmagazine.net. That's lawofattractionmagazine.net. Well, I am back and I'm really excited about my guest today. I have been thinking about this all week. My very special guest for the third time, I think, is Harry W. Carpenter. And he is the author of The Genie Within, Your Subconscious Mind, How It Works and How to Use It. And I love this man so much because he has been studying and teaching the this subject of the subconscious mind, which I am so intrigued by for, I think, 60 years. And so if anybody knows about the subconscious mind, he does. And so I want you to really open up your spirit, open up your heart, and really uh, just get ready for a shift and a change in your life. So Harry Carpenter, welcome back to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Well, thank you, Constance, and thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure to be on your program. So what and you, I, I believe, what, actually, this is the fourth time. The fourth time. You're right. You're right. And so, Harry, you are 84 years young. And uh, what have you been up to lately since the last time you were on the show? Well, actually, I've, I've become a uh, an artist. Well, not an artist. I'm a painter. I just got this yen to uh, express myself and... One day, I just bought all the equipment, opened up a, a studio, and that's what I've been doing. Uh, oh. I think it was something that just had to come out. Anyway, I'm enjoying it. It's, mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun. And, and, and so, Harry, now the your book is in how many languages? It's in nine languages. It's been out uh, 10 years now. Oh. And uh, this it's pretty steady. Sales are pretty steady. Uh, it's done very well in uh, Asian countries. Uh, in Taiwan, uh, they, as last I heard, it was over 60,000 copies. Wow. I mean, did you ever believe it? it's just so powerful? And whenever I'm walking, I have listened to your podcast where I recorded recorded you over and over and over again. And Harry, every time I listen to it, I'm like, how did I miss that? So today we're going to be going back to the basics of uh, the subconscious mind, what it is and how to use it. So, so Harry, why should... Why should anyone or someone be interested uh, in his or her subconscious mind? Well, this has always puzzled me that people, most people, are not because they're unconscious of it, so they don't think about it. But in reality, by at least or around 90% of our behavior and our decision-making originates in the subconscious mind not the conscious mind. And I know people are thinking, well, you know, I'm aware of everything that I decide. I'm aware of what's going on. Yeah, that's the 5 or 10%. But there's a lot going on underneath the surface, and it's important to know about it. Uh, another reason, it's bigger and more powerful. Your subconscious mind has millions of more computational power than your conscious mind. It's faster. And importantly, we are a creature of our habits, many of our habits. And many of those habits 
were ingrained in our subconscious when we were children or even as a, when we were babies. And those habits are no longer uh, applicable now that we are adults. I'm thinking of, uh, for example, impatience, um, uh, eating poor eating habits, or even phobias that were developed at an early age. And lastly, and importantly, your subconscious is always seeking goals. Now, the question is, who's giving it these goals? Mm. Are you giving it the goals, well-thought-out goals, or do they come from uh, relatives, parents, friends, and even televisions? So it's an important factor to work out your own goals. Wow, I I love that. That is always seeking goals. And so if somebody doesn't have any goals, it'll just keep defaulting back to those old goals that people may not want in their lives anymore. That's When I am teaching the class, uh, that's the first thing I have the students do is take out a pencil and paper and write down your goals, short-term, mid-term, and long-term. Put it away, look at it occasionally, but make sure that you have set goals in your subconscious mind. Otherwise, it's haphazard. You don't know what you're, you're seeking. And remember the quote from Emerson, be careful what you wish for, for you will surely get it. Mm, that's powerful. So, so Harry, what can the subconscious mind do for us? Well, it's uh, it's almost I won't say infinite, but it, uh, many many things. Uh, it can take lead us to success in whatever we do. I'm convinced that successful people use their subconscious mind much more than the average person whether they know they're using it or not. But successful people are usually have definite goals. They have uh, some, a target that they are uh, working towards. Mm. They are directed. They're more focused and even more intuitive. Uh, another factor is health. It's... Uh, In fact, it's a new science, psychoneuroimmunology. It's been proven, and it doesn't get much publicity anymore, but the mind and the body are connected, and the mind communicates with every cell in your body, and every cell responds. So there's two-way communication going back and forth. And an excellent book that explains this is... uh, Molecules of Emotion by Candace Bird. And uh, mm. yeah, that's their um, you know, habits. You can change habits that I spoke of before. If you have a bad habit, you can reduce stress. Sleep is another important thing. Wow. Uh, people don't realize it, but I'm sure maybe it's even happened to most of us. We get eight hours sleep and we we wake up and we're tired. Yeah. That's because we didn't relax those inner core of muscles. In order to totally relax and allow your body to regenerate and rejuvenate itself, you need to relax all those little muscles that allow the, the blood to go through the, uh, uh, those little blood uh, capillaries. Through the arteries, mm-hmm. And you, and that is a subconscious process. The kind of, that's an involuntary muscles. So you have to learn how to really relax. That's an important factor. Physical skills, uh, uh, you know, sports. It's almost mandatory. That I think that's the one field now mm-hmm. that really accepts the mind-body relationship and the need for the. Uh, understanding the subconscious mind. Uh, you ca- you cannot do a sport, a function in a sport with your conscious mind. 
you have to relax and let the subconscious mind do it. Uh, students can improve their grades. And you know the, what's great about all this, Constance? It's all effortless. Effort is a conscious mind activity. Wow. So if you're going to use your subconscious mind, you have to let it do its work. You have to let it do it naturally. And that is effortless. You know, that's amazing because so many people are trying really hard to change their subconscious programming. It's effortless. And yes, uh, uh, may I just point out something? There are one word affirmations that I was uh, hoping to get to later. But one word affirmation is try. When you try to do something, what do you do? You try and try again. Mm -hmm. To try is to fail. So that there is always a better word than try. If you try to to, uh, hand me a book, you don't hand me a book. You try to hand me a book, but you don't hand me a book, right? Right. So when people, when I used to teach class, I would give this this lecture about try, and, and invariably somebody would come up and say, you know, I've been uh, made this affirmation up and I try so hard, but it just doesn't work. <laughs> we get that. Wow. And that's a kind of... word that's very difficult. And you will find that people use that over and over again during the day. Right. You know, sometimes when my clients say, well, I'm going to try to do that, I'm like, you need to take that word out of your vocabulary. <laughs> right. If you have a friend that says they'll try and help you, they come over and help you, and one that says, I'll come over and help you, and that one of them you can depend on, the other most likely isn't going to show up. Oh, that's so powerful. So, 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 what are some examples of what the subconscious can do? What can it do? Well, we just went over uh, quite a bit mm-hmm. what it can do. Uh, if some examples are, um, if any, I think most people have seen stage hypnotists, mm-hmm. which I think is the most dramatic thing. Um, I've seen a, a stage hypnotist at the, uh, the county fair here, and it's just astounding what they can do, what people do just based on a suggestion. For example, I, I saw a man, uh, the uh, hypnotist said, you just came back from another planet, and why don't you tell us about your visit? And this man just started describing his visit And this is in front of hundreds of people. I would wager that the average person who asked that question and looked out over hundreds of people would be tongue-tied. Right. But And just went on and on and on about it. He could even speak their language. Hmm. So we can... uh, Our our subconscious mind is capable of so much. Strength is another thing. Uh... There was, on Johnny Carson's program once, uh, there was a, a mentalist, refused to call himself a hypnotist. Mm-hmm. Is, I don't like that word either because it has so many bad connotations, and nobody really knows what hypnosis is. If you if Google it, I mean, there is, don't really know what it is. But anyway, Prescott had called himself a mentalist, and he suggested that Johnny Carson could become rigid and they uh, suspended him across two chairs, put his heels on one chair, his head on another, and he remained rigid. And I believe it was Bette Midler sat on his stomach. Wow. And he remained rigid. And that's something you can not normally do. Mm-hmm. And don't do it at home because you can, you can strain something. Right. Our subconscious mind limits us for a reason. And it does limit us. 
But the reason is we are capable of so much more than we think we are than we can do physically that we can injure ourselves. So... Uh, <clears throat> Those One are of, some powerful examples. Hmm. Yes, uh, another powerful example which is quoted in almost everybody's book, Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, etc., is multiple personality disorder. Uh, and that is the same person changes personality, and not only the personality changes, but they can develop a scar. Their IQ changes. Uh, even eye color has been mm. uh, recorded changing. Wow. I mean, those are some powerful examples of, of, of just the power of the subconscious and what it can do. I mean, you know, that's really awesome, Harry, I tell you. Mm. So, so what about health? You know, everybody's concerned about health health and health care and I don't know what the statistics are but every day so many people become baby boomers and so everybody's trying to stay young and vibrant how can the subconscious affect our health oh in many ways but uh, I already mentioned the psychoneuroimmunology science where there's a conscious mind, a subconscious mind talks to every cell, and it talks back. There have been some um, very interesting experiments. Mm-hmm. One was conducted by Professor Ellen Langer, I believe, of MIT. This was done a couple of decades ago, and it, <laughs> excuse me, mm-hmm. recently has been getting publicity, and I think she's repeating it now because it was kind of ignored at the time, but she took a hundred people, 70 years old, took them to an isolated resort and, and had them act as if, talk as if it was 20 years ago. And she played old records, old TV programs, and <laughs> how do you mean? Mm-hmm. And she measured, they measured them physically and mentally, you know, physiologically, uh, before and after. And in every test, in every person, they measured younger, mm. physically and mentally. And I mean, that is That's pretty amazing. indicative of what the subconscious mind can do. Right, right. And, and and so it, I, I love it when you say, and here, if you need to get you some water, you can get, take your sip of water. <laughs> I know here in I, I know here in Atlanta, the pollen has been just all over the place. So people are coughing and everything. I, I, I love it when you said the mind talks to every cell and the cells talk back. I mean, that's phenomenal. Yes. And, and the important thing, I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, positive thoughts send out these, these certain uh, neurotransmitters that enhance your immune system. And on the other hand, negative thoughts tend to be um, um, the, the opposite. They, mm-hmm. they shut it down. So things like hugs are good for you. They really are. They make you feel better. Uh, there was you know, a couple months ago. There were a couple of running articles in the New York Times about medic uh, drug companies are developing new drugs to enhance your immune system. Well, that's great, and I, and I hope they're successful. But really, all you have to do is think positively, be a positive person. And in, and enhance your immune system. There's if we if we have time, I have my favorite story is is about this subject. And the, you remember the um, PBS series on Doctor Harriet, Harriet James Harriet, mm-hmm. all great and small, all the quaint little stories in Yorkshire 
uh, England. And he was a vet, veterinarian. And one day he visited this farm and he saw a, a U. Um, E W E, of course. You mm -hmm. very distressed. Very, had an infection, and Harriet wanted to take care of the you. And the farmer said, "No, I don't want to spend the money on her. She's going to die anyway." So Harriet said, "Well, let me give her some vitamins." What he did was he attempted to euthanize her because she was in such distress. Well. A couple of weeks later, he ran into the farmer in the pub, and the farmer said, those vitamins were a miracle. He said, that you slept for three or four days, and when she woke up, she was perfectly healthy. Well, Harriet was astounded, but later he thought about it, and he realized what happened. She was had this serious infection. She was in pain. She had was fearful. She was afraid, mm -hmm. and it shut down her immune system. So the the um, infection flourished. But as soon as she was put to sleep, there was no pain, no anxiety. And so it allowed her immune system to kick into gear, and she cured herself. And so that's why it's important to be positive, think positive, uh, what you think is extremely important. Wow. You know, that, that's awesome. You know, I, I just, I'm intrigued by the subconscious and I reread your book again this week and I'm just saying we're going to give listeners an opportunity to find out your website, but you've got to get this book. I mean, it's just one of the books that, that, that you must have. So Harry, basically, what is your message? Well, I have three kingpins that I like to stress. Okay. And one is the subconscious is so different, which we've already d discussed. But you have to realize that, and you have to realize you can't divorce your subconscious mind. <laughs> you are married <laughs> with life. You have to learn to get along and to work together uh, just a couple of uh, things that, that emphasize the difference. The subconscious mind is bigger. The subconscious mind communicates differently than we do for our conscious mind. We communicate right now. We're communicating in words. Right. Subconscious mind communicates in images, mm. emotions. It's not logical which always reminds me of TV ads, but that's another subject. Uh, the subconscious mind is not mature. Uh, hopefully, we are, our conscious minds are mature. Uh, time is different. The subconscious mind only operates in the now, where the mm -hmm. conscious, of course, we have the future, the past, and the present. Uh, the uh, important point is the functions, the voluntary functions, of course, are controlled by the conscious mind. But there are many, many, many more involuntary functions in our body, all controlled by the subconscious, which can do trillions of things at one time, mm. whereas the conscious mind can only do one thing at a time. Uh, that brings us back to sports, which you, you cannot go through a complex physical uh, motion like swinging a golf club using the conscious mind and swing smoothly and powerfully. You have to do it with a subconscious mind. Anyway, back to differences. Memory, of course, the memory of the conscious mind is short. Memory of the subconscious mind, believe it or not, is essentially infinite. Mm. It can remember and does remember everything. Uh, the subconscious mind doesn't sleep. And the important thing is many people are being led by the subconscious mind, which is immature, may have some uh, counterproductive habits, whereas what you want to do is learn how to make the subconscious mind your genie and have your conscious mind 
be the leader. Wow. You know, Harry, oh. when you said the subconscious mind, you know, I, I got that I, as I was walking one day listening to you, one, one of our old recordings, when you said it's most impacted by images uh, Etc. And I realize why visualization is so powerful. Visualization is powerful. Affirmations, uh, which is the third kingdom, actually, uh -huh. and that is those methods are really relatively easy. I mean, many so many books, you know, read it and just have faith, visualize. But the the thing is, if you don't know how your subconscious mind works and the laws that it obeys, you're very likely not going to be successful. You wow. must understand that. Wow. Well, well, tell us how does it work? <laughs> Give us some examples. <laughs> well, it works. Uh, there's some important things. One is it's literal. It takes things literally. Yeah. Like when you say, oh, my aching back, you don't mean you have a, a, an aching back. You don't want an aching back. But that's a message. You're telling your subconscious mind, hey, my back's aching. I want an aching back. Uh, or some people say, oh, that makes me sick. Well, if you say it once, that isn't going to have any effect. But if you say it over and over again, and if you say it with emotion, uh, it's liable to make you sick. Your subconscious mind never sleeps. So you can put it to work 24 hours a day. Um, it accepts everything as real and true. Mm. So again, be careful of what you think. Only think of yourself as you want yourself to be. You know, I just read something very interesting uh, during the uh, football mm -hmm. uh, uh, playoffs, and that is uh, uh, one of those moments. Uh, the uh, quarterback of the Patriots, uh, anyway, his physical and mental coach is quoted as saying, where concentration goes, energy flows. Mm. That's what grows. So what you think about most of the time, where your your energy goes, is what you're going to get. So that's powerful, careful. Tom Brady of the Tom page. Brady. Right, right. I mean, you, you know, Harry, as you're talking, I'm just, you know, when you said it doesn't know the difference between real and imagined, uh, it brings back to my mind a client who I had who was extremely beautiful, but she had been told, oh, you're ugly, you're stupid, and she was really smart, but she said that all of the time, and so that became real to her, even though it wasn't true. One of the laws of the subconscious mind is it can only hold one concept as true and binding on a particular subject. Mm. So if you think you, you are not beautiful, you, you think you're not popular, if that is the concept in your subconscious, no matter how beautiful or, or talented you are, that's the way you act. And you have to overcome that. Now, we don't forget anything. Anything that's in the subconscious is ingrained. It's there. But if it only accepts one concept as, as binding, you overpower it with another concept, one where you realize you are beautiful, you are talented, you, you etc., and you ingrain your subconscious mind with that new concept until one day that's the binding concept and that takes over. Uh, Maxwell Maltz wrote a, a, a seminal book. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm not thinking of it, mm -hmm. of, of, of the name, but he found that when he conducted surgery, uh, he was a... Um, plastic surgeon 
And when he took somebody who had very, let's say, grotesque, grotesque features, and he made them a good-looking person, sometimes they changed, sometimes they didn't. And he figured out it was mental, not physical. If it's wow. our attitude, what we radiate from the inside. So we have to feed that image that uh, into the subconscious. So, Harry, I've heard you talk about that when you program or reprogram your your subconscious, that it has to be done in the alpha state. What do you mean by that? Well, the alpha state, there are essentially four states of mind. Okay. There's the awake state, which I hope is what we're in right now, mm-hmm. where we're very aware of everything around us. We had to be to survive uh, from the all these years and and then if you relax and kind of daydream you drop into the alpha state which is a normal state people everybody goes into it in and out all the time during the day you just don't recognize it unless maybe you're 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 really daydreaming and uh, staring at the wall and then if you Really, just but, and then if you drop down farther, you go to sleep. That's the delta state. In between the alpha, or excuse me, yeah, the alpha and the delta is called the theta state, which is a very narrow range, but is an important range because that is where it, we are creative, where we understand, where we get, we solve problems. Uh, we can come back to that because mm-hmm. that is so interesting. Uh, I have some examples of, of problem solving that has happened to me. But back to the main thing, the alpha state is the doorway to the subconscious mind. It's like the difference between an incandescent bulb and a laser. Mm-hmm. If you talk to your conscious mind, subconscious mind and attempt to reprogram it, in that when you're in a conscious state, it's going to be counterproductive because your conscious mind is, it's, it has that little voice on your shoulder. Oh, yeah, sure, you can do that. No way. Uh, you've never done that before. You can't do it again. It, it, it has that, uh, that little voice. Right. That keeps, and, but if we just kind of relax, go into that daydreamy state and then visualize what we want. Then we are in that alpha state and we're talking to our subconscious mind. Now, once you do that and you come out, forget it. Don't think about it in the awake state because you can re- it can negate, it can work mm-hmm. against So that's the importance of that of the alpha state, and it, very few people, or books, or teachers mention that. But it is um, it, it it's a kingpin. You have to be aware of doing your programming in the in the alpha state, and when you do that, like I said, it's like a laser. You're focused, and and you can. Sh- Program your subconscious mind in a very short time. In other words, we talked about the woman with the uh, uh, low Mm self-esteem. And let's say uh, she's 30 years old, 30 years of negative programming, but she can overcome that in a very short time. And people ask me, well, how long does it take? Well, everybody's different. There is no answer to that. Yeah. It could take a day, it could take a, uh, a couple of weeks, maybe a month, who knows. But it does, you can change it. You know, and, and I'm using that, and I remember you said that, and for me what works best is in the evenings, just before I go to sleep, I really get myself, I listen to music, put headphones on, and get really relaxed, and then I just visualize and feel exactly you know you know what I desire and it's a very powerful process and and you taught me about you know entering into that alpha state that's awesome yes remember it goes from 
to be awake state, to alpha, to theta, to delta, to sleep. So when you go to sleep at night, you're going to the, the alpha state. Mm-hmm. So it's a good chance to uh, program your subconscious mind. And it's a, uh, a terrible time to think of something you're worrying about. Many people go to bed worrying about what's happening during the day. You're programming for the thing that you don't want to happen. So, so true. And you, and you talked a little bit about it's always seeking goals. So when people write down their goals, should they just write them down and then visualize them? How, how What should they do with the goals that they have? Well, I, I'd suggest just writing them down and, and putting them away. And then when you're relaxed, and, you know, let yourself kind of daydream. Pull them out and just glance over them. And then put them away again. Don't think of them. That's one way. Of course, if you're really working on an affirmation, then it's a little different. You uh, uh, spend some more time with each affirmation. But uh, I used to, well, I, yeah, I used to. I'm 84. I'm, <laughs> I kind of take things for granted now. <laughs> but I've always used to write down, keep track of my goals. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I can't think of anything that didn't come about. Uh, it, 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 it works. It's just keep your mind focused or get your mind working on the goal that you want and it will come about. So true. Well, what about some of the laws of the subconscious? Do you have any examples of that? Well, the one of the important ones is the present tense. Uh, so many uh, affirmations are like, "I will be, uh, I will be affluent. I will get better. I will be healthy." Well. You've already got your wish because tomorrow you will be better, but you're not better. You will always will be better. You remember your subconscious only works in the now, the present. So you have to word your affirmations, think of your, your, do your visualizations, visualizations in the present. Uh, I will is the same thing as saying I'm not. Is if you if I say I will be better, you're admitting you're not better. But what you want to do is give the goal to your subconscious in the present tense, which means you have to visualize it and know that you are already better. Mm-hmm. And, and what about how does what is the the law about accepting? only one dominant concept. What does that mean? Well, we talked about that in the mm-hmm. self and and some people are double-minded. In other words, let's say uh, somebody's 20 pounds overweight and they want to lose some weight. So they, they write out an affirmation and they go through the ritual of, of the of repeating it every day in the alpha state, <clears throat> or, or they're repeating it. But if their subconscious mind has a concept that they are overweight, they, in other words, the conscious mind says, I'm not overweight, the subconscious mind says, uh, let me rephrase that. They're, they're eating for a gratification of, mm-hmm. of that, that's a better example. They're eating for gratification. And so they want to, they want to change that habit, but it has to be, they have to be, it has to be the same uh, affirmation in the conscious mind as the subconscious mind. Hmm. And I'm not being very clear about that. Yeah. I, I, it, I understand exactly what you're saying. That's yeah, and, and that's why, that's why, mm-hmm, 
that's why many times people consciously want abundance and wealth, but that subconscious said, oh no, you've been poor all of your life. Your mama was poor. Your daddy was poor. Look at your life. You were living paycheck to paycheck, but consciously they're saying I'm wealthy, I'm rich, et cetera. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. wow. So you have to change that concept in the subconscious mind so you can become successful. What about willpower? Well, that's, that's the same thing. The will, what people don't realize is that the will is in the conscious mind. I will myself to be wealthy. I will myself to be uh, uh, a good golfer. But the power is in the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. If the subconscious mind has a different concept, then you are double-minded. You have to change that concept in the subconscious. And, and that's one of the, the many methods and tools you've mentioned, visualization or using an affirmation, doing it in the alpha state and changing that concept in the subconscious and then you become single-minded, and you will be successful. Yeah. Expound on expectation. I've been doing a lot of study about that lady and have been intrigued by the power of expectation. What the subconscious mind, or what you expect to happen usually comes about. So what you, the epitome of expectation is in placebos. I'm sure everybody's heard of placebos, mm -hmm. which is a, a pill identical to the real pill, but it has, it's nothing but a sugar pill. It has no medical benefit whatsoever. However, in study after study, without exception, when they have different groups, and one group gets the placebo, one group gets the new drug, at least, at least 33% of the people who get the placebo get the same benefits as those who get the real drug, mm. which really complicates uh, drug testing because uh, m most drug drugs are not 100%. In fact, they're, they're in Canadian. Uh, article in uh, um, uh, Psychology Today, oh, about a decade ago, I, I have it on file someplace, but I won't mention the drug, but it's a, uh, it makes people feel better for people who have uh, had anxiety. Mm -hmm. Well, when you really analyze the data, and this was in the magazine, and you look at the influence of the placebo, the drug really can't be proved to be effective, and it has side effects. <laughs> so, it, uh, placebos are, are, are a very important part of testing, and they explain the power of expectation. And there was a um, placebos also are dependent on the um, influence. Uh, generated when you when you give the drug. In other words, if a nurse gives a drug, that's one thing. If the doctor gives a drug, that 33% can jump to a much higher level. If you if you give an injection rather than a pill, the power of expectation goes up. And one doctor claims that the power of expectation be as, can be as high as 90%. Wow. That is so, well, you know, Harry, every day I say out loud and believe something good is going to happen to me today. I, I say that and, and I say, and, I, and, I, and it always does. I look for it. I expect it. I'm like, I wonder yeah. what it is. And uh, just, just, wow, just expecting, changing what we expect. So you gave some easy examples of how we can, um, really reprogram our subconscious you talked about uh, um, just you know affirmations and visualizations what other examples can you share some easy methods that we could use well, a couple of uh, real simple ones 
Uh, our first one is one word affirmation. Mm. You know, and usually an affirmation, when I write an affirmation, it's several pages. Mm-hmm. And it takes maybe 10 minutes. I cover all bases. But you can use a one word affirmation because words have two meanings. One is a definition. In other words, if I would say mother, the, the definition of mother is a female parent. That describes mm-hmm. it, defines it. Uh, but the connotation that it brings up is many kind of connotations, and all those connotations are different in everybody. So if uh, I was to hit my uh, hand, my finger with a hammer, and I say, ouch, well, ouch, what does that bring up? Pain. I know that mm-hmm. it's associated with pain. Well, pain is not what I want. So I would think of a numb, rather, as a one-word affirmation. Uh, a favorite affirmation of mine is I used to, when I was working, I'd come into my office, and there'd be a stack of uh, phone calls to return. There'd be, a, I had three, three ta- or two tables and a desk in my office. Uh, at least one table would be full of reports that I was writing, and I'd come in and think, oh, my gosh, how am I going to get all this done? And, of course, you're giving yourself an affirmation. Or you're saying, oh, I'll never get through this. Well, that's a terrible affirmation to give yourself. You know you're going to have to do it. You know you're going to do it. So just say done. Done mm. and get to it. Get right on it. Uh, so one-word affirmations work very well. Uh, another method which was one of my favorites, is called the crop pot. And you know what that is. It's mm-hmm. a slow cooker. You get up in the morning, you throw some uh, vegetables and meat in the crock pot, and you put it away and forget about it. Come back in the evening, and your your dinner's ready. Well, the subconscious is the same thing. Remember, it doesn't sleep. It works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you turn over a problem, to your subconscious, and then you forget about it. And then sometime, these little uh, ideas will turn up. Solutions to your problems will will just pop into your head. Uh, There's a Reverend Butterworth who has had a a radio program in New York used to say that he never prepared a sermon. I mean, my goodness, I would have all kinds of anxiety right. going into a radio program without preparing. But what he did is he'd take a piece of paper and he'd say, okay, the sermon for such and such a date. And he'd write down all his ideas and then he'd put it in the drawer. Well, that's turning it over to his subconscious mind in the crock pot. And during the interim uh, the subconscious mind is organizing this sermon, collecting ideas as they occur, and so it really isn't quite spontaneous. Wow. Well, you know, we have about five minutes left, and I want you to share about the Genie Within Productions. How can people get your book? How can they get your conditioning CDs and anything else that you have to offer? Certainly, I'd be glad to. Well, of course, the book, as you mentioned, The Genie Within Your Subconscious Mind, How It Works and How to Use It, is available in paperback, in ebook, and audio, all available on Uh Amazon.com. The audio book is also on Audible and iTunes. The conditioning CDs are available on my website, which is thegeniewithin.net. And uh, if it isn't already, it can also be .com. But do the genie within .net. And I have um, all the exercises in the book on one CD, and except for health. Mm-hmm. I have a separate CD for health. I think that is so important. You know, every, everything else is kind of insignificant if you don't have and have your health. So I have true. a metronome uh, CD, which is nothing 
more than a, a clicking sound that takes you into uh, alpha or theta. So just to relax or to snap on when you're when you're doing affirmations. Uh, I was writing a monthly newsletter, but the distribution got so large, I decided I'd just put it in an e-book. Mm -hmm. So there is The Genie Within, The Essays, which is an e-book available on Amazon.com for a uh, huge 99 cents. <laughs> in it. Yeah, but there are some very good tips in it, some very interesting subjects on exercise and, and using the subconscious mind. And incidentally, I have written some books on applying sports to, or the, the principles of the subconscious mind to sports, in particular pickleball, which is a sport I play now, and tennis, which I used to play. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and they are available on Amazon.com, but if you if you're not a tennis player or a pickleball player, still they are still valuable to you. All you have to do is substitute another word for, because the principles are the same. And there are uh, uh, books on each one, and and the CD on the tennis. The CD, if we have time, just to mention briefly. Mm -hmm. Getting into the zone is the goal of every athlete. It very it happens. It doesn't happen all the time, but when you're in the zone, you're completely focused. Time seems to slow down, and you play at the very peak of your skill. Well, to do that, you have to go into the alpha state, maintain that state while you're playing, and that's what this CD does. It conditions your mind to go into the zone. Wow. So those, that is what I have available. I tell you, Harry, you are amazing. You know, just, I'm, I'm in awe just listening to you. And and uh, if you never heard him before, I'm going to strongly encourage that you go to his website right now. Stop what you're doing. Uh, I'll go to Amazon and really get his books and his ebooks and everything else, his conditioning uh, CDs. And man, just work with that and just see how much your life changes. And, and Harry, I just want to say to you how much I appreciate you and your years of study. Make sure you tell your wife. How long have you been married? Um, 54 years now. 54 years. Make sure you tell you. I lost track. <laughs> well, we forgive you, but you are so awesome, and I'm just so appreciative to you. Uh, and I just want to say for all of the listeners how much we appreciate your wisdom and knowledge and your sharing. Well, it's a pleasure talking to you. I enjoy it, and thank you very much for having me on. Thank you. Well, once again, this is Constance Arnold with the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. Uh, you know, you can visit my website at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. And as I say every Sunday, remember this. God loves you. I love you. And the best is yet to come. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance will be back next week with another inspirational show. For more information, go to fulfillingyourpurpose.com or send Constance an email at constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com.